While there isn't necessarily a right age to play video games, there's definitely a bunch of video games that we managed to get our hands on as kids that, in retrospect, we probably played a little too young. This was a bigger deal back in the early days of video games, when parents saw all video games as toys for kids, so it might not have occurred to them that some were actually riddled with mature themes and intended for adults. If you were one of said kids maiming people in Mortal Kombat, getting the pants scared off you by a horror game, or spending your time in a digital strip club, you were either stoked by your parents' oversight, moderately scarred, or both. Whatever the case, the good old days of playing games that we probably shouldn't have been allowed to are gradually getting behind us, so let's take a walk down memory lane and remember some. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 video games we all played way too young. Number 10, Leisure Suit Larry. Falling more along the lines of games your parents wish they hadn't accidentally given you too young and not games that you're upset to get too young, we've got the 1987 adventure Leisure Suit Larry. Technically, the game whose full title is Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards kicks off with a warning telling you some elements of the plot aren't appropriate for kids, and you have to answer age verification questions to access the game. For example, you might be asked to describe the Mile High Club, the best pickup line, or to identify the result of Watergate. Yes, really. For the uninitiated, if you're wondering what could be so bad about this one, basically the game surrounds the story of Larry Laffer trying to get in women's pants. Despite its infamous reputation, the point-and-click sex comedy adventure games weren't particularly gratuitous, but they certainly were more than a lot of kids bargained for if they figured this was just another video game. Sure did encourage a lot of nine-year-olds to memorize details about Watergate, though. Number 9. Sanitarium Keeping to point-and-click adventure games, but way on the other end of the spectrum, we've got 1998 Sanitarium, which is a game my parents should not have let me play as a seven-year-old, but here we are. Sanitarium follows the story of a man who awakens in a run-down sanitarium with amnesia and a bandaged face. The game takes you to a variety of twisted locations, like a town that's only inhabited by malformed children, who keep ominously referring to someone known as Mother, though there appear to be no adults around or a demented circus that would make the clown It feel right at home. The psychological horror game is actually pretty fantastic, especially for the time, and it's a really unique entry in the genre, not to mention its art style makes it just as uncomfortable to experience today. Just not the video game you should give to your small child and not expect them to get nightmares. Number 8. Conker's Bad Fur Day Conker's Bad Fur Day is just about the ultimate video game switcheroo. For busy parents picking this one up, it appeared to be a platformer for the Nintendo 64 that cast the spotlight on a fuzzy red squirrel. It is all those things, but Conker also happens to swear like a sailor and drink like one too. While this was undoubtedly a hoot for the lucky kids who managed to pull one over on their parents so they could hang out with the deranged squirrel and help a king bee, um, pollinate a bodacious sunflower, the sound effects really speak for themselves, if you hadn't managed to be scarred by the source material itself, then your parents overhearing you playing this one in the next room probably did the job. Though in your defense, the sexy bunny on the cover really should have tipped them off. Number 7. Resident Evil Resident Evil and many early survival horror games slipped under the radar for a lot of otherwise diligent parents because there was still an understanding in 1996 that video games were a kid's pastime. So how scary could they possibly be? As the scene where the dogs launch themselves through the window can attest, pretty bloody scary. You could easily sub in your personal experience with any Resident Evil, Silent Hill, or equivalent childhood survival horror game that you managed to get your hands on from your parents or at a friend's house, only to make sure you left the lights on at night for a good amount of evenings afterward. Whatever your personal terrifying moment is in Resi, from the first zombie scene where the camera makes contact, or trying to work out how Capcom managed to make opening a door tense as hell, this one has most likely stuck with you. Number 6. Postal 2 if Resident Evil was a little before your time, then maybe you grew up with Postal 2, a game that follows a protagonist known only as Postal Dude as he, well, goes postal. Kids probably didn't pick up on just how brutal the game was at the time because pew-pewing everything in sight was just way too fun. The game is ultra-violent and ups the ante from its predecessor by being played from a first-person perspective, as opposed to the isometric view of the original. The gore is rampant, you can tack a cat on your gun to make a really disturbing silencer, 
and use health pipes, which is exactly what you think it is. Dismemberments are a dime a dozen, and there are so many different weapons you can pick up to cause carnage. Postal 2 is still a pretty high contender for the amount of blood, guts, and other bodily fluids in a video game, so you can just imagine the horrified parents. Especially that one billboard that says, hey kids, your parents are going to die. Number 5. Grand Theft Auto If you weren't the 9 year old playing Postal, then you were probably the 9 year old playing Grand Theft Auto. Any of the Grand Theft Autos will do here really, but for my childhood, let's call it around GTA 3. All was well at the family Christmas function when my teenage relative decided to show me and my little brother his fun new game that featured drug wars, drive-by shootings, and all kinds of mayhem. Of course, at the time, kids who encountered any GTA game before they were supposed to thought this was excellent, and parents wandering by would usually just see a car speeding down the road or a busy city. Oblivious to the drug-riddled missions of underworld dealings and the strip clubs peppering the streets. Only upon having to explain what exactly your current mission was or why you just drove down the sidewalk mowing down a dozen civilians would you find yourself needing to make some hasty explanations. While the majority of kids would have absolutely loved this, it certainly wasn't the innocent car driving simulation that a lot of parents thought it was. Number 4. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask might seem like a pretty tame entry compared to some of the other games on this list, but if you'd just come from Ocarina of Time two years prior to try out the Skull Kid starring, screaming, moon-threatening, twisted hellscape that is Majora's Mask, there's no way you weren't lying awake over this one. The reuse of so many assets means everything feels familiar, but in a wrong and disturbing way. Not to mention the three-day apocalypse clock, which basically means kids who grew up with Link had to watch him die over and over and over again if they wanted to play this one. The gloomy story that largely covers themes of death and grief is surprisingly adult for its target audience. From the tortured characters to the creepy happy mask salesman, the constant threat of your own demise, alien invasions, Link screams throughout his transformation, Clock Town's final moments before its decimation, and the elegy of emptiness that makes one of video games more horrifying statues, there's a lot of freaky stuff in there. Also, that damn moon, that is a sight you cannot unsee. Number 3. Still Life by 2005, a lot of parents had cottoned on to the cheeky postals and resident evils of the gaming sphere. The shooters, horror games, and crime simulators that had made their way onto home consoles through some Christmas shopping era or grandparents' birthday gift debacle were beginning to become a thing of the past. And just still life, a point and click adventure game from Microids, who were at this point known in part for the dreamy, charming Siberia point and click adventures. Innocent parents who watched their children lapping up the game about the mammoths with the cool automatons in it might have decided to grab this one the very next year. And that, my friends, would be where the era began. Still Life tells the story of cop Vic McPherson and her grandfather in parallel as they both pursue copycat killers who are characterized by, well, maiming and killing sex workers. Yeah. While there's no combat in the game, the themes are beyond mature. There are graphic crime scene photographs, many of which you'll be taking yourself, and plenty of scenes that I promise will never ever leave your brain. Especially if you played this as a kid. Locations in said game include, but are not limited to, a high-end BDSM brothel, an abandoned crack house, and more fresh bloody murder scenes than you can shake a stick at. On the upside for us now is the fact that the pre-rendered cutscenes and environments mean the game still looks absolutely beautiful. Of course, that was not on the upside when you were a kid and you were seeing all this horrible stuff in even higher definition. Number 2. Max Payne Max Payne, upon a first glance, is just classic video game fare. It's third-person shooter neo-noir action with a gritty, grizzled protagonist with an even grittier and grizzled past. While a lot of this one was relatively innocent shooting shenanigans and action antics, the nightmare sections really switch things up. During these creepy delusions, you need to guide Max down trails of blood while listening to the constant wails of a baby crying. All of this, of course, relates to the deaths of Max's wife and child, which happens at the beginning of the game. Not so child friendly. Max Payne might not be the goriest or creepiest game on this list, but when it does get to be way too much, you're expecting it a lot less than you would be with some of the other titles on this list. As with everything else here, enjoy the cheeky nostalgic memories of getting away with an adult game or the memories of nightmares, depending on how old you were when you first played it. Number 1. Harvester 
I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that no child was gleefully stoked when they got away with playing Harvester. GTA, sure, Resident Evil, Max Payne, even Postal, not Harvester. Like many of the games in this list, 1996's Harvester slid under the radar with some parents for being, quote, just an adventure game. As in, initially no combat, so how bad could it possibly be? If somehow your parents did look past the threatening font and foreboding box art, you would have been treated to some of the nastiest things ever implemented in a video game. And I don't just mean the horrors of full motion video. You're a dude with amnesia, because of course you are, and though things start out innocently enough, it quickly trundles into creepy Stepford Wives territory, where everything feels a bit off. A bit off then becomes WTF is happening off when you begin to encounter maimed cats, hanging body bits, and a horrific conspiracy that I won't spoil for you just in case you want to play it. You'll commit an aid in arson, murder, suicide, and an almost unfathomable amount of sex and violence. The last third of the game trades out adventure gaming for a run-of-the-mill murder simulator peppered with occasional sexual encounters. So if you had to explain this one to anyone walking by, I feel for you. Especially the bit where a mother gets eaten by her zombie children in full motion video goodness. A scene so terrible there's no way we can show you here, but that's what Google's fault. That's the end of our list, but let me know down in that comment section which video games messed you up as a kid and what were you glad you got your hands on. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more gaming goodness.